Welcome to the California state-specific Q&A review. Question number one. The California exam has a litany, a variety of questions that you will have to answer. And if you want to know more about what questions are heavily tested, check out my video called The Three Skills of the California State-Specific Exam. But getting to this video, in the next, you know, I'd say, five to ten videos, we're going to cover the most heavily tested questions. Because there are some types of questions which you can always expect to be on your California exam. And question number one is no different. California loves real-world hypotheticals, and California loves boundary law. So let's put those two things together, two things I love too, and let's talk about California. The call of the question states, you, a PLS, are hired to conduct a boundary retracement survey. After completing the research and the field work, one of the four property lines just stumps you. And it stumps you because the deed calls for the line to be due north, 1,029.5 feet to a railroad spike. You found the beginning monument, and you also found the railroad spike, something that may not happen in the real world. Then you inverse between them. And the actual distance between the two monuments was actually 1 minute 25 seconds at 1,030.20 feet. What should you hold? All right, so let me set this up in a more graphic format to show you exactly what's going on. You go to a property, and the property is lotted or not lotted, doesn't really matter. But you go to one of these properties in the map, and the legal description, the deed, gives you, beginning at the half-inch rebar, go north so many feet to a railroad spike. So you have a bearing, you've got a distance, and you have a monument. In this case, be thinking about, is this an artificial monument or is this a natural monument? Because that could play into the answer as well. But before we talk too much about the real facts here, Let's see our answer choices. First of all, it tells us that this is a select all question. So it could be A, could be C, could be D, or it could be all of the above, or it could be just two of them. So our answers are a deed bearing, a field bearing, railroad spike, or a deed distance. So am I gonna hold the bearing and distance in the deed? Or am I going to hold the bearing and distance as measured in the field to the railroad spike? I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure there's a surveying textbook that can help us out and figure the answer. Many people tell us that they are going to take the FS or PS exam just to see what it is like. Don't waste hundreds of dollars. Take a practice test. Order a full-length practice exam book and find the same categories, types, and number of questions as the actual exam. If I've got a boundary problem, I've got Brown's Evidence and Procedure. According to Brown's, in conducting a retracement survey of a meets and bounds boundary, you better know what meets and bounds are, the retracing surveyor must be knowledgeable and apply the priority of calls. This leads us to our next question. What the heck is the priority of calls? The priority of calls is sort of like a hierarchy of evidence. We've got field evidence, we've got deed evidence, we've got higher evidence and lower evidence. Well, what's going to control? Number one, lines actually run on the ground by the creating surveyor. Did the surveyor place the rebar? Did the surveyor place the pin, the railroad spike? Absolutely. Two, natural monuments. There are no natural monuments here. Three, artificial monuments. There is an artificial monument, and that is the railroad spike. So the railroad spike right now is the top dog in the evidence hierarchy. Four, calls for adjoining property. Don't have any of those. Five, calls for courses and distances. We have that. 
we have a deed course and a deed distance. And then finally, designation of quantity. What I mean by that is acreage. So what do we have here? Number one, we've got an artificial monument, which could be a rebar or a brass cap, or in this case, anything that human set. That's a railroad spike. And secondly, we've got a course and a distance from the deed, from the property description. And let's go back to our answer choices here. So I've got a deed bearing. That's lower than the railroad spike, so that's out. We have a field bearing. So if I held the railroad spike, I would basically rewrite the deed with the new bearing and distance. I like that. I'll take B. C, railroad spike. The railroad spike is an artificial monument, and it will be held above the deed bearing and the deed distance. And then finally, D, which is the deed distance. That's a no-go because that's below the artificial monument. So long story short, we're going to hold the field bearing, B, and we're also going to hold the railroad spike, C. If you'd like to know more about why we did this, then you should definitely pick up a copy of Brown's Boundary Control because it will explain all of this in much more detail. Want even more content for the California PLS exam? Join us for a complete online prep course that includes videos, handouts, workbooks, practice questions, and a full-length practice exam. This course has everything you need to pass the California PLS on your first try. Join me at nlcprep.com CA for more information.